Welcome everyone to the second segment in the 2023 Smarter in September series. I'm Kelly Robert and I'm really excited about this week's presenter. We have Jonathan Burleson from the Nebraska SHIP office and our topic is Smarter Medicare Re-enrollment, Understanding Upcoming Changes. There's always so many questions surrounding Medicare and we find that our friends at the SHIP office do a fantastic job of answering them. So settle in. We're gonna let Jonathan take it away and we'll have time for questions at the end. Jonathan, thank you so much for being here today. Welcome. Thank you, Kelly, I appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen now and just uh, let me know uh, if you see it on your end, just to make sure. And I am sharing now. I do see you. Perfect. All right. Well, then, um, thank you again, Kelly. Um, we always appreciate an opportunity to provide education to the public, uh, you know, in uh, any time during the year. So uh, this, of course, is definitely a very appropriate time to provide education. So uh, thank you again for this invitation, Kelly. Um, Let's go ahead and dive in. Um, so my name is Jonathan Burleson. I am the administrator for the Nebraska SHIP and SMP. Um, today, I'm going to provide some education on this wonderful topic of Medicare and how to navigate through uh, this particular topic. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Let me go ahead and get my clicker working here. Before we dig into the topic of Medicare itself, I do want to introduce the program to ensure that you understand who is providing this education to you today. So the Nebraska SHIP and SMP, what we are is a federally funded uh, program through the ACL, the Administration for Community Living. Basically, that federal funding means there's a SHIP and SMP program office in each uh, U.S. state and territory. Here in Nebraska, we are uh, managed by the Nebraska Department of Insurance. Uh, so federally funded, but state managed to bring you unbiased Medicare education and counseling. And we also serve as a source to report potential fraud, error, or abuse. Certainly the 800 number you see on your screen is a statewide hotline anywhere in the state of Nebraska. Uh, if you call this, you are able to pick the location nearest you. As you do see on the slide, we do have seven locations to serve you. Um, certainly, of course, we do have great information at our website. You see uh, the web address there, doi.nebraska.gov slash SHIP. Uh, we do have some wonderful materials created by the SHIP program, but also provided through CMS itself. So definitely just note that you do have a wealth of information uh, and services provided through this program, SHIP and SMP. Now, beyond that, what we're going to uh, talk about today, what I'm going to cover are going to be these topics. Uh, it's going to be a little fast and furious. I am going to provide a lot of uh, basic information, um, but this basic information is certainly something that should be understood, especially when we're talking about potentially making changes to our Medicare benefits when open enrollment comes around. Um, there's a lot of questions that become uh, that 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 get created through advertisements that we see on television, and sometimes those advertisements can you know add to the confusion. So we at the SHIP office really do really encourage folks to uh, have that uh, basic core understanding of Medicare and from there, um, certainly understanding your options moving forward is that much easier. So these are the topics that we are going to uh, review in this next uh, 45 minutes to an hour. So let's go ahead and dig in. What is Medicare? Certainly that's the first question. Um, as we see, it is federal health insurance. It was created in 1965, signed into law by President Lyndon Johnson. Initially, when Medicare was was uh, first provided, it was only available to those folks who were age 65 years of age or older. It wasn't until 1972 that Medicare was expanded to include coverage for these other two groups of individuals, those folks uh, younger than 65 qualifying uh, for Medicare based on disability or end-stage renal disease. So 
in order to qualify for Medicare, a person simply needs to fit into one of these three categories. The image on your screen is the current Medicare card. It is still in a red, white, blue paper card. And certainly we want to remind folks that it is a paper card. There are reports of scams in our states where people are being called and being offered a plastic Medicare card. Uh, basically, that caller is asking for your Medicare number in order to get the plastic card sent. Please know that that is a scam. Medicare does not provide a plastic Medicare card. If you receive one of those phone calls, hang up. Definitely, mm -hmm. it's not a legitimate mm -hmm. offer. So just keep that in mind with this uh, Medicare program. Again, that is uh, the current Medicare card shown in the bottom corner. Now, beyond that, what about the rest of Medicare? We hear about all of these parts of Medicare. There's part A, there's part B, part C, and part D. How do we know uh, what's appropriate? So that's what we're going to kind of address in this uh, navigating the basics. Remember that when you have Medicare available, uh, you're typically able to choose your Medicare from one of two options, uh, original Medicare or Medicare Advantage. Visually, what we're showing you is is that the original Medicare structure can potentially be comprised of four individual parts or pieces, if you will. Whereas the uh, alternative Medicare Advantage is an option with parts of Medicare wrapped into one package. We're gonna deconstruct this a little bit further. We're gonna first start with the original Medicare Part A and Part B. So your Medicare Part A, what this is, is this serves as your hospital insurance. It actually only covers uh, services uh, listed here, inpatient hospital care, skilled nursing facility care, home health care, and hospice. Certainly, it is typically premium free. You've already paid for your Medicare Part A through 10 years of employment, paying your Social Security Medicare taxes. For individuals who may not have uh, a work record, perhaps they were um, an individual who uh, uh, was a homemaker or dis, uh, uh, just probably didn't have those work credits available, certainly qualifying for Medicare through a spouse's work credit uh, is an option. So premium free for basically most individuals in the U.S. Now, although premium free, if you do use your Medicare Part A, there are co-pays and deductibles that uh, need to be understood. The deductible for Medicare Part A in this calendar year, 2023, it is a $1,600 deductible. What your $1,600 pays for is the first 60 days of hospitalization. Medicare, of course, is covering uh, everything else during that time. You, the individual, again, have that $1,600 deductible. Now, in the event that care is necessary beyond 60 days, you do see on the slide that you do have access up to 150 days of care, but there's a daily copay that's imposed on days 61 through 90 and days 91 through 150. You see that copay increases, in fact, doubles. So, certainly, we do see that the cost for Medicare Part A services can add up depending on the period of time a person is hospitalized. Outside of that, if a person needs skilled nursing facility care, we do see on the screen this year, uh, of course, Medicare does pay for the first 20 days at 100%, and then you as an individual have access up to 100 days of skilled nursing facility care. But as you do see, there is a daily copay. That amount this year is $200 per day. So again, definitely the service, or rather the insurance is there to help an individual receive services. Uh, but cost can accrue uh, quickly depending on the length of time a person needs to use this particular part of their insurance. Now, beyond that, Medicare Part B. Part B is going to be the part of Medicare that you potentially use the most. This is your outpatient insurance. It's paying for the doctor's visit, the specialist. Uh, whether or not a person needs lab work, x-rays, or medical equipment, Medicare Part B is the part of Medicare that pays for those items and services as well. So think of it as being the part of uh, your Medicare insurance that pays 
everything else. Now, certainly you do have a monthly premium associated with this part of your Medicare. This year it is $164.90. This premium can increase or decrease from year to year depending on what Medicare decides. Typically we will find out about that in uh, the latter part of the year. Probably late October, early November is when we uh, get word of whether or not Medicare uh, will increase premiums or decrease premiums. Uh, interestingly enough, sometimes they do go down. Um, this year in 2023, the 164.90 is a lesser amount than what people paid the year before in 2022. Now, on your screen, you certainly see an indication of IRMA, Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount, is what the acronym stands for. Folks who have a higher income, we would see individually an income at 97,000 or more, or as a couple, 194,000 or more, a person could see an IRMA imposed, basically meaning they will pay more for their Medicare Part B premium. Note that the IRMA is uh, based on your tax return from two years ago. So that's uh, definitely what Medicare is using as uh, a way to determine whether or not the IRMA will exist as it's from your tax return from two years ago. They're looking at the modified adjusted gross income. Now, certainly if a person gets notification that they do owe an IRMA, note that you do have the right to appeal this decision. Um, that appeal can be done through uh, a life-changing event, potentially loss of income through retirement uh, would be one of those life-changing events that could potentially reduce or eliminate the IRMA. So you do have uh, uh, options if you do receive one of these notifications. Now, outside of that premium cost, Medicare Part B does have its own deductible, $226 is that amount this year in 2023. What will it be next year? We're not uh, sure yet. Certainly, again, that news comes later uh, this year. Now, once that deductible has been met, this part of Medicare has a co-insurance, uh, a 20% responsibility that you, the individual, carry. Uh, Medicare, of course, is paying the other 80%. You, again, have that 20% responsibility. And unfortunately, that 20%, there is no out-of-pocket maximum uh, with regard to that. So certainly, that's where folks might consider a Medicare supplement to assist with that. We'll talk more about that when we get to that particular subject. So Medicare Part B, outpatient insurance, monthly premium with a small deductible, and then a 20% coinsurance beyond that. Now, as far as um, uh, we covered rather uh, cost and uh, coverage briefly there, let's go ahead and talk about enrollment. And because I wasn't sure um, what mix of folks we would have uh, attend, I am going to go ahead and address kind of um, each uh, enrollment opportunity a person has when it comes to the Medicare program. So the first uh, enrollment opportunity is known as your initial enrollment period. Um, this is a seven month window. It begins three months before turning 65 and it ends three months after turning 65. Certainly a person any, uh, can enroll into their Medicare during the seven month window and make those elections for uh, the other parts of Medicare that they may need to put into place. Now, as far as the enrollment process is concerned, Social Security Administration is the entity that is responsible for that particular function. Social Security is there to help people enroll into Part A and Part B, and their function is also to collect premium for Medicare Part B. This is typically done through a deduction from your Social Security benefit. Now, if you're not taking Social Security yet, but you do opt into your Part B, you will have an option to be able to pay your Part B premium either directly or through an electronic fund transfer from a checking or savings account. Uh, Medicare does provide flexibility in that, but once Social Security benefits uh, begin to be collected, Medicare will automatically deduct that Part B uh, premium from that benefit. 
Now, as far as the uh, potential options, certainly you can visit your local Social Security Administration office. Um, many folks are reporting that they are asked to make an appointment, so you might benefit from calling ahead. The phone number that we're showing on the screen is the national phone number. Certainly reaching out to the local Social Security Administration in the state uh, would probably yield a quicker conversation. Um, phone, uh, phone numbers can certainly be found through Google or you can call the Nebraska ship and we can help uh, locate the nearest office and provide that phone information to you. Um, but if you're a person who's comfortable with online processes, uh, Social Security's website is probably going to be the easiest and fastest way to execute enrollment into the Medicare program. Do note that you will need to have a My Social Security account in order to do this, um, but uh, certainly it is uh, a very quick process, typically 10 minutes or less to do that initial enrollment into Part A, Part B. So Social Security is where you go for that enrollment. Outside of that, the Nebraska SHIP office is here to help you understand the rest of your Medicare. Before we dive into that, though, let's talk about the other en uh, enrollment opportunities for Part A and Part B. This is a question that we uh, get in our office quite frequently. I'm still working. Do I need to enroll into Medicare? Certainly the answer uh, more often than not for a lot of folks is probably no. Um, this part of Medicare can be confusing and the misinformation that is out there uh, really has caused confusion. So because of that, I tend to read this particular slide verbatim. And as we see, it states, if you or your spouse are currently working, and you receive your health care coverage from active employment, you are not required to enroll into Medicare at age 65. Let's go ahead and elaborate on this just a little bit more. This rule is specific to employer size. Um, the employer that is considered a large employer, this is where the rule would fit. A large employer in Medicare size is 20 or more employees. So if your employer has 20 or more employees and you're getting your insurance through that employment, Potentially, you don't need to enroll into Medicare even though you qualify for it. Now, if the employer has less than 20 employees, enrollment into Medicare is encouraged. The reason for this is because of the coordination of benefits that exist with Medicare. Medicare has this office, again called Coordination of Benefits, and what its function is, is to determine who pays first. Again, large employers, we're going to find that uh, the employer insurance is going to be the primary payer, uh, whereas Medicare would be the secondary payer in the event that a person had both insurances in place. With a small employer, less than 20 people, coordination of benefits actually states that Medicare is the primary payer and the insurance from the employer is the secondary. And that's a very important detail for anyone who has that situation of 20 or less employees. So if you know somebody or if you are in that particular situation and you want to gain a little bit more information, please do reach out to the Nebraska SHIP office. It is a very important distinction to be aware of. Now, outside of that, one of the things that might um, <clears throat> cause you to not enroll into Medicare is if you have a health savings account, that HSA that's paired with a high deductible health plan. Um, essentially, if a person were to enroll into Medicare and have an HSA, they would no longer be able to make contributions to the HSA, their own or those contributions from an employer. So if you're a person who has the HSA and you want to continue to contribute or receive contributions from an employer, enrollment into Medicare is not recommended because uh, basically when Medicare is in place, um, the contribution can see tax penalty. I believe it's around six or seven percent. So certainly if a person has insurance from active employment, their own or their spouses, they have some decisions and potentially one of those decisions is not enrolling into Medicare. If that is, of course, the decision the person makes, 
what they will have available in the future is known as a special enrollment period. This is essentially uh, an opportunity to elect Medicare at any point while still covered by the group health insurance, but you do also have a window of up to eight months after the loss of that insurance to elect the Medicare Part A or the Part B medical insurance. Now, in the event that a person misses the special enrollment period, the only other time enrollment can be done is during the general enrollment period, the first quarter of each calendar year. Coverage would begin the first of the next month in the event that a person enrolls during this time. And depending on the situation, they could potentially see a Medicare penalty. So definitely uh, enrollment, it depends on your individual situation. And if you have questions about your individual situation, you're welcome to contact the Nebraska SHIP. Uh, our counselors are equipped uh, with knowledge to be able to help you determine if enrollment is necessary. So that's part A and part B in a nutshell. Um, certainly I could speak on just that topic or rather those two topics for much longer, but um, we don't have that time available. So we'll go ahead and proceed into the next part of original Medicare. And that of course is the Medicare supplement, sometimes called a Medigap policy. Now, what your Medicare supplement option is, is it's optional extra insurance. You by no means are required to enroll into an, uh, a Medicare supplement. Um, if you do choose to do so, what you are opting to uh, purchase is an insurance policy that helps pay your share of cost. That Part A deductible, the $1,600 I'd mentioned previously, potentially a supplement can cover that if you purchase that level of coverage. The 20% coinsurance for Part B, certainly that is something that can be covered either partially or fully, depending on, again, the level of coverage that uh, you elect with uh, the supplement. So optional extra insurance. A couple things to note before we move on to the coverage side. Remember that the Medicare uh, supplements are standardized, meaning that the coverage purchased from one insurance company versus another is the same exact coverage. So you've probably heard of Plan G like George, a Plan G from uh, Company X versus Company Z. It's going to offer the same exact coverage, even if there's a difference in premium cost. And certainly, uh, in your research, you will find there are differences in premium cost. With regard to options, the Medicare supplements uh, have a varying um, uh, opportunity to choose from. One of the things that I always point out here is Medicare's mistake, or at least it's my perceived mistake. Um, the Medicare program, um, not only do they have Part A and Part B, but you see that with the supplements, they've chosen to use a numerical system, or rather an alphabetical system, whereas my opinion is they should have used a numerical system. So a Plan A supplement is available. Uh, plan A, Plan B, Plan D should not be confused with Part A or Part B or Part D. So when we say parts, we're talking about Medicare overall. When we say plan, we're talking about that subset, that supplement within original Medicare. So don't let that very common mistake catch you. Um, again, Medicare uh, created us an alphabet soup. We'll go ahead and swim through that soup uh, as best as we can. So this uh, matrix uh, on the screen, what it's, it's uh, basically showing you is the different levels of coverage that you have available from a supplement. The six line items above this black line in the middle, these are basic required benefits due to that standardization of the policies. Every Medicare supplement must cover these, four, uh, these first six line items. Below that black line, these are extras. The uh, individual has the right to choose coverage that covers these extra line items. The Plan G, like George, is the most comprehensive at this point. Certainly in the past, there was a Plan F. You've probably heard of that. Um, but as we see at the bottom, that plan is no longer available to anyone who has achieved age 65 after the year 2020, January 1st specifically, 2020. So when you're looking at these different supplement uh, options, you're basically choosing the level of coverage that's most appropriate 
appropriate. A plan G offers the most amount of coverage. A plan K is offering comparable coverage, but when we see a percentage, the percentage is indicating what the plan covers, leaving you, the individual, a share of cost. We see that share of cost uh, has a limit at the bottom. Um, so a plan K, for example, might fetch a lower premium. Maybe it's around 50 or $60 a month, but the trade-off is almost the $7,000 limit on out-of-pocket spending. So you as an individual, you're certainly looking at these different options and making decisions based on uh, the coverage that's best for yourself but the coverage that also meets uh, your pocketbook. Now, speaking of pocketbook, what kind of premiums could we anticipate from a Medicare supplement? The range on the screen is not an exaggeration. It is very much a true result in the state of Nebraska. Premiums can start as low as $30 a month, uh, probably being offered from a high deductible option. That plan K is an example of, of such, um, but premiums can be as high as $560 a month. Um, definitely the uh, cost fluctuates from company to company and plan to plan. So when you're doing your research, keep in mind again that standardization. Um, if you're buying a plan A or a plan G, remember that the coverage is the same from company to company. Certainly we would anticipate the cost of an A to be less than a G because there's less coverage provided. Um, but again, uh, remember that the coverage that's being purchased has been standardized. So the coverage being provided by company Y versus company Z in this example, even though there is a large difference in cost, the coverage is exactly the same. Now, when it comes to purchasing, where and when does uh, a person do this? Medicare supplements are something that you will need to buy from a licensed insurance agent or broker. Nebraska SHIP, we can provide education and give you information as to what is available. We cannot sell the policy to you. You must work with a licensed insurance agent or broker, which we are not. Now, couple things to remember when it comes to the purchase of your supplement. Remember that you do have a one-time guarantee issue period. This issue period begins when you start your Part B medical insurance for the first time in your life at 65 or after. Basically what this means is within that first six months, an insurance company is required to sell the policy to you regardless of pre-existing or current conditions. Now, outside of that six month window, certainly you as a consumer, you do have that right to shop around. Potentially, you, uh, uh, if you're a person who's had Medicare in place for a couple of years and have a supplement, you may have seen some increases to your premiums. Um, if that's the case and you desire, uh, you know, um, uh, desire a lower premium, you do have the right to shop around. Just note that the application process will include underwriting, that process where you will need to answer questions about your health and your history. And uh, based on that information, an insurance company has the right to determine whether or not they will offer a policy. And if they do, what cost they would uh, ask you to pay. That example of the $560 premium, that's an example of a premium where a person has gone through underwriting and has uh, some issues, uh, but issues that the insurance company is willing to, to, to insure, but at a very large premium. So in order to ensure that you come in at the lowest premium available, um, certainly remember that you do have a six month window of guarantee issue right. Um, this is certainly something to keep in mind, um, especially when a person's turning 65 and maybe they're still working or maybe their spouse is still working. Maybe they decide, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and take part A because, well, why not? We don't have an HSA. It would uh, get us a Medicare number just in case we need it. Um, and um, certainly we would want to make sure that a person uh, in the case, if they wanted a supplement, that they made sure to defer that enrollment because once Part B starts for the very first time, so does this six month window of guarantee issue. Unfortunately, it cannot be paused or uh, refunded 
or uh, however you want to say it, uh, once it's begun and used, uh, it's begun and has been used. So very important fact there. Um, certainly, again, the Nebraska Ship Office can offer you uh, great information as far as who's available in your area and what kind of premium you can anticipate. Now, the final part of original Medicare is Medicare Part D. Now, this is going to be the part of Medicare we're going to hear about coming the next few months. Medicare Part D drug coverage open enrollment is starting in roughly a month. October 15th uh, is when that begins. So what do we need to remember about Part D? Well, Medicare Part D was introduced in 2006. What it exists to do is to provide you insurance coverage for your generic and your brand name prescription drugs. Unfortunately, Part D will not help with over-the-counter uh, medications or vitamins or minerals. Again, only brand or generic. Now, in Nebraska, we have 24 plans available this year. Uh, the premiums you see range anywhere from essentially $5 a month up to about $114 a month if I'm rounding. Certainly, if a person receives, uh, receives an IRMA notification for Part B medical, they should anticipate an IRMA notification for Part D drug as well. Certainly, again, that opportunity to appeal that decision does exist, and you would want to work with the drug plan to work through that appeal process. Outside of that, there is potentially a deductible for this part of Medicare as well, anywhere from zero up to 505, the maximum allowed in the U.S. this year. Next year, that deductible amount could change. We will find out in uh, the next couple of weeks uh, what Medicare has determined. Outside of a deductible and premiums, co-pays and co-insurance do exist. Difference between co-pays and co-insurance, a co-pay is a set dollar value, whereas a co-insurance is a set percentage of cost. Depending on the prescription in question, you may have a co-pay or you may have a co-insurance. So those are things to keep in mind, especially if you are doing a comparison of plans during this open enrollment season. Speaking of open enrollment and where do we sign up, this is kind of a theme that we've seen from Part A and Part B. We have the initial enrollment season to be able to enroll into this insurance. We have the special enrollment period available in the events that a person has insurance from employment and has decided it's time to retire. Uh, the window of opportunity to enroll into Part D is much smaller than A and B. Remember A and B, I said you have up to eight months to enroll. With Part D drug, it's a smaller window. It's only 63 days, basically two months to opt the uh, into a Part D drug plan if doing so during the special enrollment period. Outside of that, of course, the fall open enrollment, October 15th through December 7th, is an opportunity to enroll. And as far as how to do so, well, you have several options available. You can contact the insurance uh, company directly. You can work with an agent who uh, potentially can sell that policy. You can enroll yourself if you are comfortable with online processes at medicare.gov, the official U.S. site for Medicare, or if you want a little assistance from your friends at the Nebraska SHIP SMP, certainly give us a call. That's what we're here to provide education and training in. So definitely note that you do have uh, multiple uh, opportunities to, to execute your enrollment into prescription drug coverage. Now, when we talk about drug coverage, typically we get that question of penalty. Penalty is certainly something that folks uh, really do want to make sure they avoid, especially with Medicare, because Medicare penalties, unfortunately, are lifetime penalties. They simply do not go away unless a person qualifies for low-income assistance. So to avoid penalty, essentially remember that you need to have insurance in place that's, uh, that is considered creditable, meaning it's equal or better than the Medicare program. So with Part A and Part B, we said that you had to have insurance from active employment, whether it's your own or your spouse's. 
Part D is more flexible. It also recognizes insurance from other sources like a retirement plan, perhaps the VA or IHS if the person is native and has access to that particular insurance option. Uh, remember that these other insurers will need to inform you whether or not the insurance is creditable. Typically they do so through, uh, through written letter, which you would wanna hold on to in the event that you needed to enroll into Medicare at a future date. Those notifications would be used to help waive or uh, basically nullify any potential penalty that may have accrued between 65 to the time a person does enroll. So basically, again, to avoid penalty, enroll into drug coverage unless you have it available from another source that is considered creditable. <clears throat> Now, if you do enroll into a Part D drug plan, you do want to keep in mind a few resources, certainly a pharmacy directory, because these plans will have a network. And within that network, uh, there's differences, and those differences can affect your out-of-pocket cost. Certainly, you do want to keep in mind the plan's formulary, fancy word for drug list, what prescriptions are covered by this plan. Evidence of coverage is that manual, uh, if you will, in how to operate or effectively use your prescription drug plan. And an explanation of benefits is that monthly summary that you receive uh, when uh, the plan does process claims for you. This is an important tool to help uh, detect potential fraud, error, or abuse. Uh, and certainly remember that you will have a plan membership card. You will use this card from your plan to, uh, to, to get your prescriptions at your chosen pharmacy. The sample card you do see is from our friends at Aetna. And um, I thought it a really good idea to show this because sometimes we get those questions. Um, how do I get my prescriptions? Do I use my red, white, and blue card? Uh, great question. The answer is no. You'll want to use the Part D card that your prescription drug plan has sent to you. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you have original Medicare, the structure we've just discussed, you're gonna have your red, white, and blue paper card for part A and part B, which you'll show for hospital or outpatient medical. You might have a Medicare supplement card, uh, assuming you make that decision to purchase one. And then you would have a part D prescription drug card as well in the event that you needed to enroll into this uh, option. So potentially three cards will uh, be residing in your wallet if you do uh, decide to take uh, your Medicare through the original Medicare structure. Now, the alternative is of course Medicare Advantage. This is an option that has grown significantly. If we like statistics, we're looking at a 50-50 enrollment into these options nationally. 50% are in original Medicare, the other 50% are in Medicare Advantage. Locally in Nebraska, uh, we're a little bit uh, skewed more towards original Medicare. It's about a 70-30 uh, uh, enrollment here in our state. Um, certainly, Medicare Advantage is a viable option. The question is, is it viable for you individually? So when we talk about Medicare Advantage, it's we need to keep in mind a few of these major facts. First, of course, is remember that Medicare Advantage is the alternative to original Medicare. Basically, if you enroll into a Medicare Advantage plan, your Part A and Part B services will be provided through the Advantage plan, the private insurance company that manages that plan. Um, services would not be provided through the federal A or B. Think of Part A and Part B as certainly uh, needing to be in place, but they sit in the back seat and the Advantage plan takes the driver's seat and that's who is managing the Medicare if you enroll into this option. Certainly viable, but again, is it viable for me individually? So things to keep in mind, you must have your A, you must have your B and continue to pay the Part B premium. Outside of that, remember that the Advantage plan is required to provide you equal or better coverage than that provided by original Medicare. So again, it's providing your Part A and your Part B. The better is coming from the inclusion of potentially the prescription Part D coverage 
and the extras like the dental, the vision, the hearing. Certainly we do see those advertisements that really do stress these extra benefits. And although they are nice uh, to have, we really encourage individuals to not make uh, an enrollment decision based solely on the fact that you might gain access to some dental or some vision. Note the, I'm saying some. Um, Typically with these plans, you are going to see some limitations. Uh, dental, for example, in Nebraska, you can see a dental benefit from a plan uh, anywhere from a couple hundred to maybe a few thousand dollars. Um, as far as usage, there's typically a network involved um, that you would need to utilize. So being aware of who's accepting the insurance is a big part of uh, using the extras. Now, as far as availability, certainly uh, your where you reside makes a difference. That's why those commercials are asking for your zip code because uh, the zip code helps determine where uh, uh, or rather what is available. Here in Nebraska, uh, 92 counties have a Medicare Advantage plan option. The lone county of Cherry, unfortunately, is the only county in our state without the Medicare Advantage plan option. So if a person lives in Cherry County, their Medicare option is original Medicare. So for those of you who don't live in Cherry, it is potentially, again, an option that you can consider. Let's dig into a little more detail. Premiums can exist with Medicare Advantage. On top of the Part B, uh, you can potentially pay an extra premium. Now, many plans do advertise a zero additional premium, but you can find some plans in Nebraska that do charge an additional premium up to $130 this year. Certainly deductibles do exist, whether it's for the healthcare side or the drug side, and uh, uh, the experience of coinsurance and co-pays does exist within this use of Medicare. So basically think of Medicare Advantage as being the uh, pay-as-you-go option. You're uh, basically paying for services as you receive them. And because there is no supplement that works with Medicare Advantage, what you're provided instead is an out-of-pocket maximum or limit. So basically pay as you go until you hit the limit. If you do, then the Advantage plan is there to pay 100% for the rest of the calendar year. So definitely, again, a viable option. Um, it's just you are uh, taking on a different cost structure. One could liken this to be quite similar to uh, insurance from an employer. Typically, those of us who have insurance from employment, we have this structure of a network. And within these networks, we're typically looking at HMOs and PPOs, health maintenance organizations, and preferred provider organizations. Basically, an HMO has a network that you must use. If you go outside of that network, you are paying 100% of the cost. A PPO has a network, and if you use that network, you typically experience lower co-pays and lower maximum out-of-pockets. But what's unique about a PPO is the, uh, uh, the option uh, that it provides to receive uh, services outside of the plan's network, assuming the provider is willing to accept it as an out-of-network provider. Certainly in the event that you see an out-of-network provider, you are potentially going to pay more out-of-pocket, potentially up to 50% of uh, the bill um, in those events. So maintaining the network is definitely encouraged, especially if you're trying to control the cost that you yourself are paying for services within this particular option. Another thing to keep in mind with the Advantage plan is the fact that prior authorization is a process that does exist. Prior authorization is essentially the process of getting permission prior to receiving services. In the event that prior authorization is not received for certain services, a person may end up being responsible for those costs 100%. So um, the, the, the Medicare Advantage plan is something that will require you as the individual to be more aware. Certainly you will have advocates, uh, you know, in uh, uh, typically through the providers that that you utilize, um, but ultimately at the end of the day, the understanding of the Advantage plan and the responsibility of cost 
lies on you. So you do need to be uh, a little more aware of what's going on when you are enrolled into the Advantage plan option. When we talk about enrollment, we see that theme, the initial enrollment at age 65 or upon uh, eligibility for disability, if that's the case for a person. Special enrollment exists of a person's working after 65 with insurance from employment. Certainly the annual open enrollment, which is coming up, is available. But the Medicare Advantage plan has also been provided one more additional enrollment opportunity. We see it is during that first quarter of the calendar year. January 1st through March 31. Only people with an Advantage plan can make an election during this time. And basically that election is either to change from one Advantage plan to another, or maybe go from the Advantage plan back to the original Medicare structure. That is an opportunity that a person can elect to, to do during their open enrollment opportunities, whether it's in the fall or that first quarter of the year. Certainly, uh, we see a similarity as far as options to enroll. You can do so through a licensed agent or broker, through Medicare.gov yourself, or if you want assistance, the Nebraska SHIP or SMP, or rather the Nebraska SHIP and SMP can assist uh, with that enrollment. And if you decide to do so, again, uh, plan resources uh, to be aware of. The plan directory, remember, because of this particular structure, you will need to be aware of providers for the hospital and medical, for the pharmacy and the dental in the event that uh, that's an extra piece of uh, uh, coverage that a person obtains through their enrollment in an Advantage plan. Certainly knowing the formulary and the evidence of coverage is very important to understand how best to use the Advantage plan. But again, that explanation of benefit is that tool that's being provided to you to, again, uh, monitor your Medicare to ensure that uh, no funny business is occurring. Certainly, you would have a plan membership card, and uh, I utilize this uh, sample from United Healthcare, just so we're not uh, showing one company versus another. Uh, I try to keep it as unbiased as we can here. This, uh, why I wanted to show this card is because if you enroll into this structure, you would actually show this card for hospital, medical, drug, or any of the extra benefits that are provided through the Advantage plan. That can include those gym memberships or even access to over-the-counter items. Um, typically, these plans are providing a stipend. Um, maybe it's anywhere from you know, $20 to $50 a quarter or even sometimes a month for you to be able to get over-the-counter items. So uh, they've, they've been creative in how you can access uh, coverage for other uh, items that Medicare itself typically does not cover. So it is definitely a an attractive option, um, and it is a viable option. Statistically, we're at 50-50 in the U.S. What I always encourage people to take into consideration is, is it viable for me individually? Um, remember, Medicare is individual insurance. What works well for your friends or your family or your neighbor, uh, it may not be the best option for you individually. So um, things to consider during open enrollment. We call them the three C's, the cost, the coverage, and of course, the convenience factor. Um, convenience is a large part of our lives these days. And, you know, the the, uh, uh, the 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 fact of convenience can also have an effect on you know potentially what you're paying uh, for for that convenience. So let's first talk about cost. So your actual drug cost, uh, and we're going to kind of focus in on drugs here because open enrollment really does center more around uh, these types of changes. Certainly the Advantage plans may see changes in network structure for hospital and medical, um, but uh, we also do find that the drug coverage is really going to be uh, kind of that driving factor in, in which plan uh, is going to serve best in the next year. So drug cost. 
basically, again, the actual drug list that exists will help determine which prescription drug plan or advantage plan to enroll into. And that list is going to have an effect on these other factors. Certainly, um, will your drug be covered on that plan's formulary? If it is, what tier level is it covered at? Typically, these plans have a tier one through maybe a five or six. The lower tiers typically are those generic drugs with lower cost, whereas we climb that tier system, the higher tiers are the brand name drugs where the cost share is higher. And of course, as I stated, the network does have a difference. We are typically looking at preferred pharmacies, standard or in-network pharmacies, as well as out-of-network pharmacies. To break down costs just a little bit more, we dig into the weeds here just a tad. So um, if you feel like you want a better uh, or rather a one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, concerning this particular part, definitely give us a call and we can explain this just a, a little bit more specific to your situation. But basically any person who has prescription drug costs within Medicare, whether it's through their Part D or through their Advantage, this is a structure that needs to be understood. Basically there's phases of coverage within Medicare, four phases that exist today, the deductible, the initial coverage, the coverage gap or donut hole, and then finally catastrophic coverage. Basically, what we're seeing here is a potential flow. If a person were to meet the deductible of their plan, assuming uh, there was a deductible, they would then uh, enter into what is known as initial coverage, where typically the plan is covering 75% of the individual's costs. That's a national statistic. Um, outside of that, Typically, a person would progress through the year within the initial coverage, unless, of course, they had prescriptions of a higher cost. In the event that a person's drug cost reaches $4,660, now this is what you spend plus what the insurance spends. Once that amount hits $4,660, you enter the coverage gap. During this time, you have a strict 25% co-insurance share, whether it's brand or generic. Now, once upon a time, the coverage gap or donut hole was much scarier. Prior to the uh, uh, 2011 ACA, um, a person would have 100% responsibility for their prescriptions during this phase. From the signing of that ACA through 2020, we saw this coverage gap begin to narrow to the current 25%. Now, in the event that a person's true out-of-pocket cost, that's what you spend, that's what the manufacturer of a prescription plan, or rather a prescription brand name drug spends, and of course, um, uh, excuse me, um, if those amounts rather add up to the 7,400, you do enter what's known as catastrophic coverage, where essentially you're paying the 5% of the cost of the drug or the set dollar values, whichever is higher. So definitely a person who sees catastrophic coverage would be a person who uh, maybe they have a brand name uh, or a couple brand name drugs in place. You know, I can think of a few uh, names that are bouncing around that a lot of people are maybe thinking about as well. Um, think of those advertisements on television. <laughs> those are typically the drugs that might cause a person to enter the catastrophic coverage. So um, the explanation of benefits that you receive monthly, it is going to give you a, a recap of where you reside within these coverage levels, X amount of dollars uh, before you hit the coverage gap, X amount of dollars before you hit catastrophic coverage. Um, that information is provided by the Part D plan or certainly you can call the Part D plan customer service to get that information uh, if uh, you don't get your explanation of benefits or you need that information sooner than waiting for the uh, letter to arrive. So definitely a lot of costs, a lot of potential costs. And because of that, we want folks to be aware of this program called Extra Help. Extra Help is administered through the Social Security Administration. And what Extra Help exists to do is to help with these drug costs that we've been discussing. Certainly there's income and asset requirements that a person would need to meet. Uh, but note that the assets do not include your home or your vehicle. And an application can be done through either Social Security or through the Nebraska SHIP SMP. 
Now, outside of that coverage is the second C. How do we, uh, how does this affect our decision making? Well, when we're talking about coverage, one of the things that a lot of folks always ask is, you know, what happens if I enroll into a plan and then my doctor prescribes me something next, you know, next year, mid-year? Uh, how do I know it's covered? Um, well, through the formulary, the drug list. Um, typically, that uh, note that the drug plans are required to cover drugs within each drug class or category, basically meaning two to three of the most commonly prescribed drugs. Um, definitely, we see a requirement by federal law that certain drug types are, ca uh, are covered. Outside of that, again, um, plans typically cover two to three of the most commonly prescribed medications. But coverage can also mean restriction, and to potentially, you could should run into these restrictions and these restrictions can change from year to year. And that's another thing that a person does need to be aware of during the open enrollment season. Potentially, uh, we see this happen um, from year to year. We run into individuals who were happy with their plan in uh, the previous year and come the new year, they found out that their plan made a change and doesn't cover the prescription anymore or has imposed restrictions like a prior authorization or a step therapy or quantity limit. So those are things that you do want to make sure that you are also paying attention to and monitoring. Um, the way that you find this out is your prescription drug plan is required to send you an annual notice of change and an evidence of coverage in the month of September. By the end of this month, everyone who has a current party or Medicare Advantage plan, they should be receiving that, exp uh, that evidence of coverage an annual notice of change. And that's going to give you some uh, basically a uh, heads up as to whether or not things are changing. Um, just that reminder that open enrollment is coming and maybe it's time to uh, make an appointment potentially. Now, when we talk about convenience, this is just alluding to that network. Remember that there's preferred pharmacies, in-network pharmacies, and out-of-network pharmacies. You will typically receive the best cost for your prescriptions through the preferred pharmacy option. Now, certainly one of the things that we were probably wanting to learn about was, well, what's available next year? If I had that information, we definitely would have been talking about that uh, a lot more thoroughly. Uh, but unfortunately, Medicare does not share that information until October 1st. So come October 1, all of us will have that opportunity to see what's available. And then come October 15th, that's the first day that a person can start making changes. And you have through the end of day, December 7th, to make any changes for the next calendar year. So that means, say for example, maybe a person says, hey, I need to make a change in October. I found a plan, it's great, this is what I'm gonna have. And then late November, a person, maybe that person has a doctor appointment and they learn that they're being prescribed something new. Um, they can go back and add that drug to uh, the evaluation. And if they find that maybe a different plan would be better, they can make that change, that election, again, through the end of December 7th. Basically, the last enrollment that Medicare receives will be the enrollment that will be put into place. So we're gonna go ahead and conclude with the final topic of protecting your Medicare. We just want to touch on this briefly, certainly as the state's SMP Senior Medicare Patrol, this is a very important part of our day to day. So basically we just wanna briefly just provide these quick tips that we do need to make sure that we are taking steps as an individual to protect our own Medicare and prevent potential fraud, error, or abuse. You can do this by protecting your personal information. Don't share your information with any individual who claims to represent Medicare or who calls you. Remember, Medicare is a federal entity. Government offices do not cold call you unless you call or initiate that uh, contact first. Outside of that, I've already alluded to these uh, resources, the explanation of benefit or the Medicare summary notice. You do receive these when Medicare pays for claims. You want to make sure you review those. 
look for things that um, you didn't receive, billing for something twice, um, billing from a doctor whom you don't know. Um, if you see something, ask questions, report it, contact either the SHIP SMP or even Medicare itself. Certainly you do wanna have information available to share if you do suspect potential fraud, error, or abuse. Certainly we do exist to serve as that uh, entity to help research and if we do uh, suspect that you uh, have been a potential victim, we can forward that on to the appropriate partner agencies, the OIG, for example, the Office of Inspector General. Um, we certainly do work closely with that office in providing tips and uh, they do uh, do appreciate the information that we are able to share with them. So that information, of course, comes from you. So even if you get those phone calls um, uh, from someone saying, hey, you know, I'm with Medicare, I need your Medicare number to send you a plastic card, that's something that we would love for you to report to us if you have some additional information, maybe a caller ID, phone number, um, something of that nature that can help that further investigate uh, investigation. So outside of that, just remember that this office, the Nebraska SHIP and SMP is available to assist you in understanding your Medicare options. Uh, I covered a lot today and you know, certainly uh, it can be overwhelming. I completely understand that. When I first started this uh, 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 with this program back in 2017, um, I was by no means a Medicare expert, um, but uh, through time and, and study, I definitely uh, have gained confidence uh, to to the point that I now administer this program. And certainly note that uh, that confidence is instilled in all of our representatives, whether they're staff or volunteer. Uh, you do have a wonderful network of individuals who are dedicated to providing you unbiased education and counseling. So uh, just keep us in mind, um, definitely. Um, outside of that, Kelly, I would love to address any questions if we have time. Perfect, we will make time. For those of you who are able to stick around, that is great. Let's check the chat box. The very first one was, you'll be sending out this presentation, correct? We absolutely can if Jonathan is okay with it. And he says, yes, I will send that out probably tomorrow. I can get it to you. And can a spouse still participate in an HSA if the other person is only on Medicare? Hey, Jonathan. So when we're talking about HSAs, HSAs are individual as well. So um, certainly get that verified with the coordinator of the HSA, whether that's the HR person or the benefit coordinator. But typically the HSA is individual like Medicare. So um, there is potentially an opportunity to still contribute. Um, just get that verified through the HSA coordinators. Perfect, thank you. If you change your Medicare supplement, are pre-existing conditions covered? So they would be covered, yes. So remember, a, a Medicare supplement exists to pay after Medicare A or Part B has paid first. So um, there is that potential of uh, a, a brief period of non-coverage, maybe the first six months, um, but that can be something that can be uh, waived or not experienced if a person's basically coming from one policy to another, typically that employment into Medicare itself. But um, pre-existing conditions, remember, um, you know, if you have a Medicare supplement, its purpose is to pay after A or B has paid first. Great, thanks. And the very last one is, does SHIP have any information on dental plans? Dental insurance. So, um, Dental is not a specific um, Medicare product, so we don't typically have much information. What SHIP can provide, um, the Nebraska Department of Insurance has a consumer alert um, that we can share with you and included in that consumer alert is information about dental insurance in general and a list of phone numbers and company contact uh, website information for companies licensed to sell policies 
in Nebraska. Um, in Nebraska, when we look at dental um, premiums, anywhere from $30 to $60, offering maybe $1 to $2,000 in benefit. Um, but again, um, you would want to do that research with the companies directly. Thank you. And we have one more, and that'll be it for today. These are good questions. If I have Medicare A and B and Advantage, am I required to re-enroll again or does it automatically continue? Great question. So um, when we're looking at Medicare Advantage or even Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage, um, if the policy uh, is available in the next calendar year, and if you have not done anything, um, have not elected anything else, coverage will simply roll over into the next calendar year. Perfect, thank you. And as you can see folks, the information for the Nebraska SHIP and SMP office is on the screen there. We are so very grateful for our relationship with them. And Jonathan, we're grateful to you for your time and expertise today. Thank you so very much. Definitely. Folks, thank you. Well, you know what? And you can come back anytime. In fact, if you want to wait until there are changes implemented and come back and brief us, that'd be great. No, I'm kidding. I know you'll be very busy then, but it's good to know we have a resource out there. Folks, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to come back next week, next Tuesday at 2. The topic is Smarter Decluttering, Getting Ready to Right Size. And our presenter is Janine Bryant, owner of Changing Spaces, Senior Relocation Service. So we look forward to that. Take care, everybody. We'll see you soon. Jonathan, thanks again. Thank you, Kelly. Bye-bye.